I'm not sure whether 13-year-old Ross Chapman is the unluckiest man in the world or the luckiest. Probably both. He was alone in his boat fishing off the West Australian continental shelf, far out of sight of land, when the unthinkable happened. He fell overboard into shark-infested waters. Fear turned to panic when he tried but failed to swim back to his boat. And he watched what he thought was his only hope for survival motor off over the horizon. No one knew Ross was in trouble, let alone where he was. But an incredible series of chance events led to an unlikely and remarkable rescue. In remote northwest Australia, the outback meets the Ningaloo Reef, one of our last untouched marine wildernesses. When I'm out there by myself, that's your part of the world for that moment. But it's out in the ocean beyond that Ross Chapman feels most alive. A lot of people would think it's kind of crazy, a young fellow like yourself, going way up into the deep blue sea with a tiny boat chasing big fish. What's the attraction? Adrenaline rush. Yeah? Yeah, getting out there in a small boat, doing what the big boys do. <laughs> and with that chance of catching that dream fish, it doesn't get much, much better than that. Ross's incredible story of survival begins in 600 metres of water, more than 40 kilometres into the Indian Ocean. Heading out in his little boat, the Popper George, named after his great-grandfather who shared his passion for the sea. His prize, the elusive blue marlin. Not everyone thinks there's much sport in reeling in these striking creatures. But Ross likes to even the odds by going solo. It's fishing as extreme as it gets. Have people warned you in the past about going into the ocean by yourself in your boat? Oh yeah, heaps. Yeah, I knew I knew what I was doing. You know, I knew the risks. I was just plain and simple, I just didn't think it would happen to me, you know? It was the 3rd of January, the last day of his holiday, and Ross was out to catch his dream fish. At 8 o'clock in the morning, he did. No. Yep. Saw him Oh, she was a good fish. She was, <laughs> she was a solid one. So you're pretty happy at the stage. Yeah, man, not a big thing. <laughs> That's how we do it. Ross used a GoPro to film the marlin as he let it go. As the fish swam off, he laid the camera on the back edge of the boat. I was just so happy, I was just like, yeah, boy. And so it goes down, and then I went to grab the GoPro, and I knocked it off the back of the boat. And then bounce, bounce, and I just like, like kind of lurched over the back to try and grab it just before it went over. Yeah, I've just ended up straight up the water. The Popper George is still in gear and motoring away. So when you finally bob up again, where's your boat? Probably five metres in front of me. Out of reach. There's no way of stopping it. Are you wearing a life jacket? No. What are you wearing? Broad shorts. Have you got a top? No. So you've got bare feet, broad shorts, and you're open to the elements. You've got no water. No. And you're watching your boat disappearing in front of you. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine your heart was in your mouth. Oh, yeah. It wasn't a good feeling, I tell you, man. Like, is this, you know, is this it? Because that... At that point of time, you know you're in a major, major problem. 
Now the fishing line is Ross's only hope. He grabs it. A kilometer of line starts unspooling from the reel. How long do you hold on to the line for? I'm thinking it must have been half an hour to 45 minutes. That was quite scary, you know, because I was getting so long and I was looking out the back behind me. You were waiting on a shot. Yeah, that's pretty much just a huge life bait. <laughs> that wasn't good. There possibly are people who are sitting here watching this thinking, well, he's got his just desserts at this stage. He's been pulling in these big fish all these years and now he knows what it's like to be on the receiving end. Yeah. <laughs> the origin's not lost on you. Yeah, got to pay that. <laughs> the sugar was on the other foot. <laughs> Ross begins hauling his way up the line. His weight makes the boat turn. Eventually it loops around and starts heading back towards him. He goes for it. So you've done a freestyle sprint basically. I have, uh, yeah. And how close did you get? About a metre and a half. I managed to swim back and grab the line again. But I was only from 15 metres off the back of the boat at that stage. And then when that line snapped, I was just like, oh my god. What'd you do? I just actually just sat there and I was just watched my boat do circles off the sea. Ross is on his own, a speck in the ocean. The current dragging him towards two nearby oil platforms teeming with sharks. I was like, oh, I just gotta stay away from those at all cost. I've been there, fished around them, and there's just thousands of sharks there. Literally thousands of sharks. So your concern is that even if you got to be oil freak? I don't think you would. Swimming against the current, Ross is growing increasingly tired. His only hope is staying in an area where he hopes a passing boat might just happen to spot him. I started peeking myself out. I started looking around, shadows in the water. You know, it all was like coming over me pretty bad then. So I just said, I need to keep swimming. I need to keep busy. So I said to Papa George up upstairs. This is your dead maternal grandfather. Yep. I said, you're gonna have to have my back. Keep these sharks off me. And I'm gonna continue going forward. And try and get myself out of this. Coming up, as Ross fights for his life, a local fisherman makes a startling discovery. I didn't know that the mates in the water. The courageous rescue effort was just pure fun luck and a serendipitous turn of events. What are the odds? It's pretty much a miracle, really. That's next. 60 minutes. Chapman has been fighting for his life alone, way out in the open ocean, for hours. He's cold, he's dehydrated, and after hours of swimming, he's exhausted. Now, nightfall is approaching, and he realises that more than anything else, he's got to keep it together in here. He mustn't panic. He needs a miracle. He needs some sheer blind luck. Mother and son, Kim and Liam Hall, had come to Exmouth for a fishing holiday. That day, they headed out with Ross's good mate, Lou McKenzie. By lunchtime, they hooked their second big marlin. Oh my God, that's an Yeah, well, uh onto a good fish for a fair while and 400 pound blue and yeah it took us a couple of kilometers off track for an hour 
it drags their boat way off course before breaking the line. By sheer chance to within sight of the Popper George. George, Upper George, black and blue, you there, Ross? I've heard a couple of radio calls earlier on. Trying to raise Ross. Trying to raise Ross. Upper George, Upper George, black and blue, you there, Ross? Just that stuck in the back of my head. So better go and have a look. You just had a bit of a feeling. Yeah. The Popper George is still drifting out into the middle of the Indian Ocean. But Ross is nowhere to be seen. The ghost ship, I call him. Yeah, there's no one on board, unexplained. Where's the crew? Your heart sinks, your whole body has just drops. You know that your mate's in the water and was Quick change, get into action. Thinking on his feet, Liam works through Ross's GPS navigation system, which has tracked the Popper George's every move. In an instant, he can see where the boat began doing circles, and the likely place where Ross fell overboard. Lou raises the alarm. The search is on. Within a couple of seconds, was on the radio said, yep, this is Ross's last known plane location. And just floored the boat and started pairing towards it. What went through your mind? Just devastated. All of us. We were all worried about sharks as well. So was Ross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. Ross is not there. Ten kilometres from where his boat was found, Ross is battling for his very survival. I mean, is there ever a moment where your brain is saying, I might die? Yeah. Quite a few times. Oh, I was just like, no way. <laughs> when you realised he'd gone overboard, yeah. all those miles out to sea, what chance did you put on finding him alive? <laughs> Sorry, Ross, but I actually jumped on his boat and I looked at Liam one set, uh, at one stage and I said, I'm driving a dead man's boat. By now, fellow fisherman Matt Gates has boarded the Popper George to coordinate the search. He's never going to give up looking for his good mate Ross, but he knows the odds are stacked against him. You thought he was dead? At this stage, we've established he'd been in the water for half a day. Um, I didn't mind his chances. Soon, every boat in the area is racing to join in aware that every minute could be the difference between life and death. Next thing I hear is... Oh, that's what you want to hear. You know what I mean? What did that mean to you? That they knew I was at sea. They knew that they knew that something was wrong. But finding Ross in the vast ocean is still a momentous task. Knowing what had happened to him could make every difference. Then Mac discovers a second GoPro camera mounted on Ross's boat. The irony was that the GoPro didn't have any information on it that actually helped you, did it? Zero. You guys just happened to film yourselves. That's pretty much what happened, actually. <laughs> the camera will prove crucial, but not in the way they expect. They want to see what's on it. They need a laptop. And local charter operator, Brendan Walker, is the only skipper who has one on board. He now changes course straight towards the Popper George. Twenty minutes later, as he scans the swells from his high flybridge, something catches the corner of his eye.
Some I did not when you saw him. Uh, it was pretty daunting. Like you saw him put his arm up and wave, and then sort of you picture this what happens in the movie where they just disappear down into the water and you don't see them again. But um, it was good to see him alive, that's for sure. Was it just pure blind luck? Yeah, that's all it was. It was awesome. I was just like, oh my god, I'm actually, I'm safe. I've been, I've been rescued. When Brendan decided to turn and go hell for leather towards your boat, what were the chances that you would slap bang in the middle of his route? Oh, it's, it's unreal. It's pretty much a miracle, really.